we we think that the hippocampus uh, carries information about temporal context, such that uh, as the temporal context information become more and more uh, less similar, uh, the hippocampal activity pattern also become less and less similar. According to one story, the hippocampus might treat uh, events that occurred, let's say, with your mom in very different places and times and file those in a similar way so that if you retrieve one memory, you retrieve others. Another way of thinking about it is that the brain would actually uh, take events that involve completely different people that occurred around the same points in time and file those together. Uh, before we put a participant into a scanner, we had the participant learn a bunch of object sequences and then while they're in the scanner, they perform uh, an independent task that uh, they require them, you know, that even though they don't really uh, need to actively retrieve the sequence information, but they still incidentally uh, use the sequence information to guide their behaviors. So we can uh, see the activity pattern uh, associated with a specific object, and we see that as the object pair become more and more temporary, di temporary distant, they become less and less similar. And what our data suggests is that the hippocampus is precisely a brain area that does this. It separates memories according to uh, uh, the temporal context in which they're encountered. So that if you see the same object but the temporal context changes, we, we, don't, we see that the hippocampus stores those memories very differently. This is pretty important because you'd also like to be able to remember when's the last time you took your medicine or... You know, so for patients uh, with memory problems, this is a big deal. You know, so it's not just a matter of something that's useful in understanding healthy memory, but it actually, um, you know, would allow us to better understand and intervene in cases where people have memory problems too.